All right, we are now recording. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we've got the uh, agendas passed out. As you can see the agenda is going to be the uh, second discussion on curriculum uh, presentation by Ms. Millington. She's going to go over that. Uh, the other two items on the agenda are the stop the bleed at, at the request from the last meeting and then a quick COVID update. The majority today will be focused on going over the curriculum uh, so we can evaluate it and determine if we want to make the recommendation to uh, present it to the school board to adopt it as Toloso's uh, curriculum. So that's going to be our focal point today. Uh, as always, there's water, there's uh, drinks out here. At uh, a, a later in the point, we'll take a, a break and, and get lunch. It's already here for us. Do that. So without further ado, here's Ms. Millington. Hi, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Um, just to recap, I'm from Coastal Bend Wellness Foundation. We have a new teen pregnancy prevention program. Um, it's for five counties in the Coastal Bend. It's because the teen pregnancy rates and teen STI rates among these counties are really, really high. Um, so that's why we were created. Um, I'm gonna go over the Making Proud Choices curriculum that we are hoping to get approved for use. Um, it is an evidence-based curriculum. And the changes this year, I do wanna point out um, for parents, it's gonna be an opt-in. So instead of sending them a permission slip and saying, if you don't want them to be involved in this, you sign this, so we need to get parents to um, sign up for it. So um, I do wanna point that out that that changed this year. So like I said, the program goals for us, um, program or Project Rush is to reduce the teen pregnancy and STI rates among the Coastal Bend here in South Texas. Um, so we're really just helping them make healthy decisions. Um, so part of our program, obviously we have the curriculum I'm talking to you about today, but also we do um, parent sessions, they're called key conversations. Um, so it goes really well with the curriculum. Um, we take parents for an hour and a half and we teach them all the tools they need to talk to their kids about sex. Um, it's a very awkward conversation and we understand that, so we uh, give them the opportunity to work through role plays, um, we give them those tools to kind of start that conversation and answer any questions they have about the curriculum, about sexual health, anything like that. So it's a good resource and it goes along with this curriculum. Um, so it's for youth who are 15 to 19. Um, they are reported as being the most vulnerable to teen pregnancy, STDs, multiple partners, and risky sexual activity. Um, so just quickly, some of the stats from Nueces County. 90% um, of teen births in Nueces County are repeat births. And the teen birth rates um, per 100,000. We are 67% above the U.S. rate here in Nueces County and 17% above the Texas rate of teen births. Um, again, STI rates, and this is all just for um, youth, 14 to 24, um, and that's going to be the blue bar on the bottom. You can see the rates um, for Nueces County. Um, chlamydia and gonorrhea, um, 66 and 42% of those percents represent um, the youth. So the age group 15 to 19, um, they make up 42% of the gonorrhea cases that were um, diagnosed in 2018. And same thing for chlamydia, 66%. So making proud choices, um, it's an evidence-based curriculum um, and it empowers youth to change their behaviors. Um, we go through and we'll go through all of the uh, modules right here. I do have the videos, um, they're on a drive. There's quite a few, it would take a while, so I don't know if y'all wanna look at them um, on your own or if you want me to show them here today, totally fine. They were all in that um, drive link if anyone was able to access that, they're the same videos that were in there. Um, and I did bring the curriculum um, in its entirety. So we'll leave this here at the admin building. Um, and this is a cop copyrighted material. Obviously, we, we don't want anyone to make copies of it or post it um, anywhere. But we'll, it'll stay here in the admin building. So parents or anyone who wants to come and look at it will be able to do so. Um, I also brought the student workbook. Um, so it goes through all the activities that we go through with the kiddos. So you can look at that as well. Um, and these will stay here. And is this a curriculum the state board approved? Yeah, so um, it meets, and I'll go over all of the TEAK standards and all of the different modules and how they go over and meet every TEAK um, standards, yeah. Um, so here are some of the outcomes for this curriculum. So an increased knowledge about prevention of STIs, HIV and pregnancy, um, more positive attitudes about birth control and condom use, confidence, so an increased confidence in their ability to negotiate safer sex and use condoms correctly, increased negoci negotiation skills, um, it lowers the incidence of HIV and STI risk associated behavior, um, stronger intentions to use birth control and condoms if they do decide to have sex, and skills 
Um, it does give them improved condom use skills as well. So those are the outcomes. The theoretical framework, um, so these are the theories that this um, curriculum draws from, the social cognitive theory, the theory of reasoned action, and the theory of planned behavior. Um, so it takes the information they need to understand the issues and then analyze. Um, the cognitive skills will allow them to examine their beliefs about personal risks, so believing that um, if they don't protect themselves, that they are at risk for getting STIs, unplanned pregnancy, that these things are real and they can actually happen. Um, the interpersonal skills, so understand their own feelings and thoughts about sex, about their sexual health. Um, interpersonal, so between themselves and their friends, um, their partners, their parents. Uh, Self-efficacy, so believing that they can, they have the confidence to make healthy decisions about their own sexual life, um, whatever that decision may be. Um, so this is evidence-based, as I said, so it went through uh, rigorous research methods, um, and these are the outcomes. So um, we do a pre-test and a post-test at the beginning and the end of the curriculum. Um, so we just kind of see where they are, at their knowledge about um, sexual health, about STIs, symptoms, and how do you get them. Um, so we go through that at the beginning and the end, um, and so those are evaluated. And of the groups that were evaluated, it was shown that the students who went through it had less unprotected sex after going through the curriculum, more condom use, and less sexual intercourse. So among participants who were sexually experienced at the baseline, the beginning of the curriculum, um, afterwards reported that they had less sexual intercourse in the previous three months um, than the control group, which is the group that did not receive this curriculum. Um, so here's the TEKS, and we'll go through each module. Um, but there's healthy relationships is now a part of the TEKS as well. Um, so that we go over. Um, and then, oh, sorry, this font is really small. Examine and analyze factors including alcohol and other substances that increase sexual risk. Um, so we go over in module three how um, consuming alcohol or drugs is going to affect your decision-making ability when it comes to deciding um, to have sex. So then module seven and eight, again, we go over um, how refusal skills can be used. So we go over negotiation. We have some role plays that we do with the kiddos. Um, how, to, how to say no, you know, how to effectively um, let your partner or anyone know that whatever they're doing is not something that you want to do and standing up for yourself and, and drawing a line where you feel that that needs to be. Where are your boundaries? We go through their boundaries. What are you comfortable with and what are you not comfortable with? Um, so those are those TEKS. There's still some more. Um, so we've got sexual risk. Our part of the TEKS is describe various modes of transmission of STIs. Um, investigate and summarize the statistics on STIs. So we do go over all of that. Signs and symptoms of STIs we go over. Um, analyze the importance of screening for STIs if you are sexually active. Um, analyze emotional risks that can be associated with sexual activity for unmarried persons of school age, including stress, anxiety, and depression. Um, analyze the importance of telling a parent or other trusted adult obtaining early pregnancy testing and seeking prenatal care if signs of pregnancy occur. Um, so again, sexual risks. Identify community resources. Um, so where can you go if you need sexual health testing? Um, how do you get sexual health testing? What are symptoms? Analyze the benefits of abstinence from sexual activity. Um, each module, as we do go through um, the symptoms and we go through pregnancy and we go through all of that, but at the beginning we always stress abstinence um, as the most important <coughs> and the only way to be 100% safe and avoid all of the things that we're going to be talking about. Um, research and analyze the educational, financial, and social impacts of pregnancy on teen parents. Um, so we go over, if you did have an unplanned pregnancy, it doesn't just affect you, it affects your community, it affects your family, how does it affect you financially and emotionally, your relationships, um, so we go over all of that as well. Okay, so module one, the goals for module one are to provide participants with an overview of the program. Um, so we introduce them to the program, we go over their dreams and goals, so in the student workbook, um, we have the first page is dreams and goals. So we have them think about their future. What do they want to do with their future? Not just jobs or um, you know, what do you want to own, but what do you want for yourself? So we go through at this age, what do you want to do? At this age, what do you want to do? So they really build out their future. Um, so we go through that with them. And this is really the base for the entire curriculum because each week we're going to talk about unplanned pregnancy, we're going to talk about STIs, and we're going to say, how is that going to 
interfere with your goals for your future. If you get an unplanned pregnancy or an STI that cannot be cured because some of them cannot be cured, how is that going to affect your plans that we've made for you for your future? So they get to hold on to this workbook. Um, we go through all of that. Um, we identify several agreements for group participation. So we'll go through um, group rules. We like to say the Vegas rule, everything that happens here stays here. So we're not going around the halls and talking about anything that you heard. Um, we like to be respectful. We just set the tone that it's a safe place that we can talk, um, but we're going to be respectful of everyone's opinions because everyone's opinions are different. Um, so we go through that. We set those all up in module one. We understand um, we do um, puberty. So we go through what are the changes that happen during puberty? How do you take care of yourself using deodorant? Um, how do you avoid acne, face wash, and all of that good stuff? So really just self-care. Um, we go through the puberty and adolescent sexual development. Um, we identify barriers to achieving their goals, um, which we go over here. And then the activities, so uh, welcome and program overview. We create the group agreements, as I said. Brainstorm about teens and sex. We talk about why do, you, why do teens want to have sex? What are reasons that teens want to have sex? And we let them brainstorm. We facilitate that conversation. Um, and then we brainstorm obstacles or detours along your timeline. So we say then, okay, well, what if you get pregnant? Um, how is that going to interfere with your plans that we just talked about? How is that going to um, interfere with your plans for your education or, or whatever it is that they made for themselves? Module two, we start going over HIV. Um, so the goals are to increase participants' knowledge about HIV, AIDS, and HIV risk-associated behaviors. Help participants identify behaviors that place people at risk for contracting STIs and HIV. Um, the learning objectives include identify the basic facts about HIV, um, distinguish facts from falsehoods, because there's a lot of myths about HIV and how you can get it and what it is. Um, identify a person's risk of HIV infection as a result of engaging in various sexual and non-sexual behaviors. Identify which behaviors are low risk and no risk for contracting HIV infection. We do that through um, a little game. And you'll see that here. So first we discuss HIV and AIDS. We define it. What is HIV? Um, we watch a video, and that one is called The Subject of HIV. Um, and then we go through the game that I was talking about, true or false, and the high risk, um, or the HIV risk continuum. So we talk about what behaviors put you at risk for getting HIV, um, and we put them on a continuum. So low risk to high risk. And then module three. So we go over um, HIV and condom use. I want to show you, I brought, we don't bring condoms or any graphic models. We have our fake condom, is what we use. It's a nylon stocking, um, so we show them how to use it. Uh, it's just like a package of a condom. We tell them how to check the expiration date, how to open it carefully, um, so that we take it out and we show them how to use it on a water bottle. So we'll show them how to unroll it, how to pinch the tip and make sure there's room at the top. Um, so this is what we use to demonstrate condom use, what they are, how they work, um, what they do protect you against, what they don't protect you against, um, all of that good stuff. So this is the condoms. Um, we confront stereotypes about who becomes infected with HIV, um, learn more about how people can and cannot become infected. Um, we weaken those negative beliefs and attitudes that foster those risky sexual behaviors. Um, identify attitudes towards risky sexual behaviors. We problem solve for risky sexual behavior situations. Um, and then we go back and talk about HIV and AIDS and what we learned about that. And we advocate and give advice regarding <coughs> safer sex strategies. And you'll see some of the activities. Um, so we go through a video, um, the hard way, um, and that is included and I will show that. Um, and then we go through calling COCO. Um, so it's a video about HIV and testing. Um, so there's a, a kiddo who's very sexually active and one who's not, um, they're talking about where to go to get tested, why should you get tested, and you go through their day um, really working out those feelings. Um, so that's calling Coco, and there's an activity that goes along with that in the activity book um, where we go through and we put ourselves in their shoes. Um, so it's very interactive, there's a lot of activities. It's not just lecturing, there isn't a PowerPoint where we sit there. Um, it's a lot of activities and it's a lot of interaction with the kiddos. Um, so module four, um, strategies for preventing HIV infection. Um, so we introduce the participants to a problem-solving method to help think through and cope with sexual choices. Review and reinforce the information learned thus far in this program. And then as far as learning objectives for Module 4, we state and explain the three steps of the problem-solving model. Um, <coughs> state how using problem-solving steps can help avoid risky situations. Explain how making their own decisions makes it more likely that they will achieve their goals and dreams as we talked about at the beginning. 
Um, and then provide correct answer to review questions on HIV and AIDS. So we review HIV and AIDS again, we review the symptoms, we review how do you get it. Um, so stop, think, and act is an activity that we do at the beginning. Um, it's kind of problem solving that we walk them through. Um, Sean and Morgan case study, um, that's something that we read about HIV. Nicole's Choice is a video I'll show you as well. And then the HIV AIDS game. Um, and I do have those materials here, and I can leave these along with the, um, with the curriculum, but you'll be able to see uh, all the different things that we use. Um, for those, yeah, those are all here. Uh, module five is STIs. So we'll talk about chlamydia, we'll talk about gonorrhea, um, we'll increase participants' knowledge of sexually transmitted infections, um, help them identify strategies for preventing them, um, increase their vulnerability so they know that you know, this is something that they can get and it's easily transmitted. We clarify the participants' attitudes and beliefs about STIs and condom use. There's a lot of myths and a lot of behavior, um, you know, different options for, for condom use and people feel different ways about it. What is it, what do you think about a person who goes to buy condoms, what does that mean? You know, the stereotype, the stigma, and we walk through that and why do you think that is? Um, but really, um, getting to what they believe about condoms and, and really just helping them understand that it's them making a healthy choice for themselves. It's them protecting themselves. Um, that the person who's buying it that maybe we're stigmatizing or we're judging um, is making a good choice. And so we try to um, frame it like that. Identify the signs and symptoms of the most common STIs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so the common STIs, like I said, we go over gonorrhea and chlamydia. Um, those are really common down here in South Texas, and they're really high rates among teens. So we go over those as far as symptoms, what does it look like, um, how do you get it. Um, we also acknowledge their perceived risk for sexually transmitted infections. We demonstrate steps for correct use of a condom. This is where we go over each step. Um, and then in the cards, there are steps that we have them in a game go through and put them in order so it'll say we remove the condom from a package we use lubricant um, roll condom on so we have them in an activity put them in order of how you would use a condom safely that's those cards there um, so we go over STI facts the subject is STDs video the transmission game um, the transmission game is a game where um, they'll each get a card that identifies them as either having HIV or an STI um, they go around and they talk to different people and they're exchanging cards, but they don't know what's on it. And then we see how easy it is for someone to give an STI um, because you can't tell if someone has HIV or an STI just from looking at them or from talking to them. So um, that game kind of kind of brings that fact home for them. Um, what I think about HIV and STI and safer sex and then condom use skills. In module six, we talk about pregnancy. So we increase the participants' understanding of pregnancy as a possible outcome of unprotected sex. We increase the participants' perception that they are vulnerable to getting pregnant or getting someone pregnant. Increase their understanding of the consequences of teen pregnancy. And we increase uh, <coughs> participants' knowledge of various types of contraceptive methods. So for this one, we'll go over um, not just condoms, but how do you protect yourself against um, an unplanned pregnancy? So we'll go over different contraceptive um, options, how to get them, what do they look like, how do they work. Um, we distinguish facts and falsehoods about pregnancy, and we identify specific birth control methods that may be used to prevent pregnancy. So we'll go through some true or false statements. There, there's always a lot of myths about what you can and can't, how you can get pregnant and how you can't get pregnant. There's always so many questions. Um, they really like this game um, because we go through a lot of the common myths and we um, play a true or false game. Um, you know, things like, can you get pregnant from having sex standing up? Like, the myth is that you can't because you're standing up. Um, so that's one of the ones that they're always really shocked to find out. Um, so we go through those. Uh, there is a video, Tanisha and Shay. Uh, so that one is a young couple. Um, I think they're like 16 or 17. Um, one of them gets pregnant, they're still in school. So you, you kind of see, it's 25 minutes, it's a pretty long video. Um, but you, you see their, how it really affects them, their family. It, it's, it's really touching and a really emotional video that they like to watch. Uh, birth control methods. So that's when we'll go through. Um, we'll talk about birth control pills. Um, we'll talk about a diaphragm. We'll talk about cervical caps. Um, we'll talk about any kind of contraceptive method. Um, we'll talk about IUDs, things like that. 
um, we'll just tell them that what they are, how they work, um, that they don't obviously prevent against STIs and HIV, that they are just for um, preventing pregnancy. Um, and then we have a game where we agree or disagree, attitudes about contraception, same thing about the condoms, like what's the stigma, a young girl is on birth control pills, what do you think about her, um, and we kind of go through that. Um, module seven, so this is when we start negotiation skills. Uh, we increase participants' understanding of barriers to condom use and increase their strategies for reducing those barriers, including how to make condoms use fun and pleasurable. Increase participants' communication and negotiation skills so they can negotiate condom use. And we enhance participants' ability to resist situations that place them at high risk for HIV or, or um, STIs. So we list the correct steps for using a condom again. We identify barriers to using condoms. Um, we identify strategies for implementing condom use, um, ways to make condoms more fun, demonstrate the ability to respond to excuses a partner might give to statements in support or um, not support a condom use. So they want to have sex and their, their partner is not wanting to use a condom. And so we go through different excuses. Um, we also go through, you don't want to have sex and your partner is pressuring you. What do you say? How do you negotiate your stance? How do you, um, again, with those boundaries that we established in the first module, how do we hold those boundaries and um, stay true to what it is that we want? Um, identify strategies for negotiating condom use with their partners. Again, um, their partner doesn't want to use a condom, but they know that their partner is supposed to. How do they negotiate that? Um, so the condom lineup is the, the cards that I showed you. We'll have them go through that game. How to make condoms fun and pleasurable. So that's just, um, you know, a lot of the excuses that people will make when they're having sex is, oh, but it doesn't feel good. Um, so really just how do you talk through that with your partner? How do you help them see that it's something that they need to do and that can still be fun um, and negotiate that with your partner? Barriers to condom use. So um, we talk about the different barriers to using condoms. Uh, condoms pros and cons so obviously and one of the takes is that we talk about the human um, failure rate of condoms realistically so yes 99% of the time they prevent against all of these things however if you use them incorrectly or they break or something happens we need to understand that we're still putting ourselves at risk and this is where we would really go over abstinence and how that would really be the only way to avoid all of those things what to say if my partner says so that's another activity where we respond to excuses we do more negotiation skills um, introduction to um, SWAT, which is um, how they negotiate. And they've got all of the posters that we use and all of that. I do want to take a minute to make sure, um, and I'll make sure all of this is available for you. So this is the first module, Dreams and Goals Timeline, how we walk them through that. Um, HIV and AIDS, how is it transmitted, how can you get it, things like that. So that's that for that module. Um, keywords, so we define what these words mean, um, PEP and PrEP, so the treatments for HIV and how to avoid it, um, latex condoms, HIV tests, immune system AIDS, we define all of these terms so that they know what they all mean. The risk continuum is that risk continuum game from the HIV uh, portion, so what um, we'll go through different activities and they'll decide if that activity is a high risk and unsafe or a red light. Um, this is all, so this is one, this will be up here. Now this will be next to it. It says some risk, yellow, and then there's green, which is no risk. So it'll be like, you're making out with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Is that a high risk activity, a low risk activity, or a no risk activity? Um, things like that. So we go through that, that's that activity. And then stop, think, and act. This is the problem solving steps. Um, so stay calm, take a deep breath, what's the problem, what am I being pressured to do, what do I want to do, and then act. How do I get help, how do I make a new choice, um, things like that, so that's for that module. And then STIs, so these are the STIs that we go over, um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, HPV, herpes, HIV, trichomoniasis, a, um, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Uh, so we define all of those, we go through symptoms and signs of all of those, and we go through how they're transmitted. Um, steps for using a condom, and these are what are on those cards that I was showing you, so we'll hang this up and we'll go through each step um, for how to use a condom. The first one is get consent, um, and then this is for the agree or disagree um, game, so we'll just hang these up and the kids will go um, stand under which one they believe the statement um, they agree or disagree with. So there's the agree and disagree. 
Um, birth control choices. So this is where we go over what the different choices are for birth control. Again, stressing that this is not for um, prevention of STIs or HIV. This is just for um, pregnancy. Um, so we'll go through what each of these things are, where to find them, what they look like. Um, we usually get a lot of questions about those. Um, so this is SWAT. So say no is the S, explain why, provide alternatives, and talk it out. So this is the negotiation part, the SWAT um, for the scripted role plays. That's going to be in this module that we go through. Um, how to say no effectively. Um, so this is part of the negotiation and refusal skills. Examples of a strong no. So ways that they can say no effectively. Um, explain why with clear reasons to um, support your choice and different things they can say for that. Um, provide an alternative. So if their partner's not listening, what's something else we can do that maybe we would both like to do that we both agree on? Um, talk it out. So discuss your feelings. I feel like you're not listening to me. How do you um, discuss those feelings with your partner? Um, so then when we do the role play, we take um, volunteers to go through a role play of your partner's not listening to you. How do you negotiate what you want and your boundaries? Um, and so then we'll go through and talk about, did they use the SWAT method? Um, do you think that they were effective in communicating um, what they wanted and what they didn't want? So that's what that is. Role play guidelines, this is guidelines for the role play. Um, reading it, uh, doing your best. Um, don't let laughter distract you because they laugh. It's, it's funny, it's silly um, that we just address the awkwardness. Um, so this is the puberty chart that we'll use in the very beginning. Um, so just the different changes in each of the bodies. Um, including hair, sperm production, acne, um, all of those things. So that's what we go over in the puberty section in the very beginning. Um, and then at the end, there's the four components of a healthy relationship. So the next module I'm gonna to talk to you about um, healthy relationships is what we teach them. Um, so trust, respect, equality, and open communication. And how does that, what does that look like in a relationship? So we go through all of that. That's the poster for that. Um, so module eight, we increase participants' communication and negotiation skills regarding condom use. Enhance participants' ability to resist situations that increase their risk for unintended pregnancy, HIV, and STIs. We demonstrate body language and strategies for effectively saying no. Um, demonstrate the ability to negotiate condom use. And express pride about sticking to the decisions that can help them achieve their goals in their future. Um, so then the safer sex negotiation skills. Um, how to talk about sex video. Um, and then we go through the discussion when someone doesn't want to have sex. Uh, practicing and enhancing negotiation skills. Um, so those are the role plays. Talking to your partner about condom use. Um, so we go over those and then the closing activities. So we'll just um, congratulate them. We'll go over the post-test where we'll ask the same questions as the pre-test just to see what they've learned. Um, all of the materials are coded. None of them have their names, but we share them with evaluators who just go through the data to see if this program is continuing to be effective. So it's just a way to evaluate to make sure um, that the kids are learning what they're supposed to be learning um, with none of their information being shared with anyone. But any questions so far? Yes, how much does this cost? Because one of the things you're supposed to be able to do is to offer the materials to parents or anybody who wants them at cost. Um, that's a really great question. I will get back to you on that. I do have all of the materials I'll leave in admin um, so that any parent can come and look at it whenever they want in its entirety. Um, we just ask it once, it doesn't get copied and, and um, you know, it's copyrighted material. But I will check on that for you. I'm not sure um, exactly how much it costs. We bought a big bundle because we um, have a bunch of educators that we had to teach and we bought all the materials so it's at no cost to the schools that we go to. Um, we just purchase it and um, deliver the curriculum. What, okay. what age do you recommend the curriculum for? It is evidence-based for 15 to 19 year olds, so just high school. Is it a program? Is it a year long? Is it yeah, is great question. employees so, teaching it? Is it your staff teach? Because I teach health and we're doing this right now. Are you? And we don't even cover because, yeah. It's hard and great question. So because it's we come from abstinence is the only mm -hmm. thing. There and, is no, yeah. If I was to pull, no. It's a big change for everyone this year. The teaks are changing. Yeah. Um, Texas is recognizing but that these are things they need to learn. There, I have a lot of questions. They <laughs> have so so because it's, I'm, I'm I'm dealing with high, I'm, my my classes my classes mixed freshmen through seniors. So you've got you have freshmen who think one way. You have seniors who think a whole and everything in between. Absolutely. And their comment is, "Well, just give us condoms." And my information from the district is that's promoting. Yeah. So if we're going to cover how to, and actually, and the letter that I send out to the, to the parents before we even start, 
is we are coming from the biological aspect of this. When the sperm and the egg, and they do have whatever they do standing up, however, because <laughs> that, you're right, that does come out. Do, yeah. Because this is the one chapter they know alcohol, drugs, and sex. Mm -hmm. They are the most involved and verbal in sharing everything mm -hmm. that they they have. They will tell you everything. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to. I don't need to know. But we look at it when the letter that I send out that states we're looking at it from the biological aspect of mm -hmm. it. When the sperm and the egg fertilize, travel to the uterus, the uterus wall, all, and we go from there. Mm -hmm. We just watch birth videos, and um, so there's a lot of things that I don't know district wide. Are we? Because we send the letter home, but y'all know how that works. Yeah. And I tell them, mm -hmm. I don't want moms and dads, you know, because we're going to say penis. We're going to say vagina. Mm -hmm. You're going to see everything. Um, so I just don't know well, how is it being presented. You're right. There's a huge shift right now because yes. uh, Texas is still an abstinence state. Mm -hmm. you know, just don't do it. Right. But we know that doesn't work. Which, which is students. why we have Papa. So this is just like in a, yes. in, a, in, in a addition to what Papa, right. because that's what and we cover so first. This program is supposed to still say abstinence. Choices, which is. And choices and refusal skills and so on. Mm -hmm. But we're still supposed to be uh, educating them on here are other options. So I guess that's why, is it, is it a, a time frame where they yeah. just get it all in one <laughs> shot? Or is it so with eight over? modules, they're supposed to be one hour long, but we work with bell schedules wherever we are. Uh, is it like a week? Um, so ideally, um, we've been at um, an alternative school right now. We're going once a week. Um, so it'll be eight weeks until we're finished. Um, that's how we're doing it there. We can be flexible. Um, but they, yeah, they're supposed to be about an hour long. So we should be able to get through each module every time that we go. Um, we do realize that sometimes we might have to cut that in half, which means we would be coming back more. So you're teaching it? Um, yes, yeah, so my team and so myself are teaching it. I've been teaching sexual health education for years. I used to teach Get Real. Um, uh, curriculum up in Ohio, which is right in front. I haven't been here very long. Um, but yeah, so we are all trained on sexual health. It's not like teaching anything else. It's different, right? Um, there's a lot of awkwardness and there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of things that you have to address and they share stories and um, we are trauma informed so we talk about um, how a lot of care not a lot but some children don't get the choice to have their first sexual encounter sometimes it's not their choice it's against their will um, so we're prepared um, with how to handle that with how to talk to them um, our language is inclusive. They all know how to talk to kids about sex. We are not promoting sex. We are not telling them to go out and have sex. We're just telling them um, how to make boundaries for themselves, how to build those goals, and then how to keep those goals for your future and how this is going to interfere with that. Um, but being realistic, so we'll tell them all their choices. <coughs> are you going to train our teachers? Um, no. She so can't be everywhere. We would come in and we would deliver it. I've got a team of five right now. Um, so we would come in and deliver them. And how big is your area? Um, we've got five counties. Um, we've got San Pat and Oasis. That's a lot. It is a lot, yeah. Um, but as you know, a lot of the shacks are um, postponed because of COVID and everything's kind of staggered. So um, it's, it's really spread out right now. So. Um, and you have the, the form letter that where parents can opt out? Yeah, yeah. So it'll be an opt-in starting next school year um, for this curriculum. We'll have to ask parents to opt into the program. But yeah, yeah, we create the permission slip. Um, we have all the materials and everything um, we provide. Okay, does everybody understand what she means by opt in and opt out? Mm -hmm. In the past, if you didn't want to attend that, you signed, no, I don't want my child to learn about this or to see the videos or whatever. And I have and, that. And now it's just the opposite. You have to want to participate. You have to want to participate. Mm -hmm. So is there an adult class or are they pulled out of other classes? Yeah, great question. It depends on the school. Um, the the um, charter school that we're at right now, we are they're pulled out of um, like a homeroom class that they have um, and we cut it in half so it's only 30 minutes um, while we're going there. Or no, it's an hour. Yeah. Can you... Uh, I don't have access to the Google Drive yet, but can you show us what it looks like and how we can review? Yeah, absolutely. I can log in. Um, I just need the, the Wi-Fi to access the internet. <coughs> Is there a... 
my biggest question was what your opinion was because you taught me health. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because they have. Yeah. Well, we're setting that up. Are there any more questions? Yeah. So, how is you know you your two coach like when they're actually in there? You're talking about this like the 13 year old in me sometimes was going. So, do are they taking it seriously? Is this something that they're really you know absorbing? In our experience, I can't speak for their experience. In our experience, one, my educators are younger, they're fresh out of college, they get on the same level as the students. They've, we've had amazing um, feedback from the teens that we've been able to teach you. We've done it in a community setting, and we've also done it in the charter school. Um, the teens love it. It's, like I said, it's very interactive. Um, we're talking to them about things, and we're not hiding things. Um, so we're very open. You do have choices, and but we want you to be safe, and we want you to be careful, and how do you do that? Um, so to answer your question, in our experience, um, they've been really receptive. Um, they're really excited to learn this stuff because no one wants to talk about it. It's so stigmatized, um, and really giving them that knowledge doesn't make them go out and have sex, which is something that I think parents are really afraid of. Um, because that's what we were taught, but it's, it's not. Um, it actually, giving that information um, postpones their um, first initial uh, sexual activity. Can you tell us like what districts use it? Yeah, um, so right now we are in a charter school in Oasis County, and that's as far as we've gotten. We're a brand new program. We just started um, at the end of July. Um, so we're still going through all of the um, approval processes for all of the shacks just like we're doing here. Um, and it's a process, you know, and, and we want to be completely um, open. So we're bringing the curriculum, we're doing these kind of presentations. So it takes a while. Um, charter schools are different. Um, they don't have shacks and boards. So um, the principal or, or whoever gets to decide if it's okay and they decide it's okay. Um, when we do it in the community, we do permission slips. Um, we send home to parents. Um, the parents say that they're okay. We show them everything. Um, they send their teen in um, and we do it out of our um, out of our facility at Coastal Bend Wellness Foundation. Will they be pulled like all freshmen, all boys, boys and girls, freshmen through 12? But like that makes, like in my class, because you, you've got the freshmen who are like, oh, the girls are after the senior boys and we'll do whatever. And then mm -hmm. you have the, boy, the seniors who are, you know, the, uh, how you present it and then, and then your numbers, because like it's going to be a big deal. Um, to answer your question, like, it's like anything, I think. You have kids who are taking it in, like really, and then you have the ones, and you can kind of tell the ones that are sexually active. And there's more than people think. Um, because once we get started, they start staying after class and they start asking questions because, you know, we talk about the STDs. There are some symptoms you don't know unless you go get tested. Well, how many of y'all are getting tested every time you have sex? You're not. So you could be sitting here sexually active and you could have something, and you won't realize it till you want to have a child 10, 15 years down the road mm -hmm. and you can't, then you're like, oh, what did I do? And it goes back to the choices. That's why we start with choices day one, but I have them for a semester. Mm -hmm. So we build that choices to drink, choices to drink and drive, choices to eat the right food, choices to, and then when we get to this chapter, the last chapter, it kind of builds, but you still have those ones that are the opposite and their comment is, oh, I have sex too because it feels, it feels good. Well, mm -hmm. so just making an A, on the yeah. test. <laughs> how about we make the A on the test? Because they will tell you. I mean, so how long do you cover this particular topic? Couple two weeks? About two weeks. About two weeks. But we do. We start with PAPA, which is what's required by the Attorney General's office, which is what are your rights That's and responsibilities. And that one's huge because you have you have the kids that we have. It's what is the difference if you bring a child into this world married versus not married? I don't care if you're 13, 14, 15, or if you're 27, 28, 35. What is the difference? Is what are my rights as a male? What are my rights as a female? You know, and going through that, they think like a lot of things. They know all the answers, and they don't. Like legally, what can I do as the male? If she tells me no, it's not. Doesn't, I'm taking the baby. You're gonna I'm not gonna have anything to do with it. He has the right. Like we just talked about yesterday. Do you tell him? They're like, no. Yes, you do. He has the right to know, and then whatever choices come from that. Mm -hmm. But there's just, yeah. 
And so, and with that being said too, so health is one semester, right? I mean, yes, they so you have two different groups. Like tomorrow's our last day with my first group and then right. next semester I get a new group. So if we were if we're gonna integrate a program like this, would, would it ideally need to be done twice a year? Right, because would it be if in coordinates with the curriculum? And you're gonna, and everybody will have to have it. So incoming freshmen, and then what about like next year's seniors? If they everybody's haven't had health, everybody's required to take one semester of health to graduate. District, yes. as of right now, yes. Okay. District, it's not required by the state. It's up to each independent school district to require it or not mm. for graduation. <coughs> we, we currently do. So there's some seniors who, because of scheduling, don't get it until senior year. My main makeup is, is sophomores and juniors. That's the biggest makeup. Freshmen, here and there, but, but they offer it in middle school, so those numbers aren't as big right now, but it's usually the juniors and sophomores, and then a few seniors here and there who for scheduling reasons put it off to the last year of high school. So that's why it, it's offered to everybody, but it's the buy-in, so how do we know how to use and then especially if they take it for eighth grade year, year do you do it? But it's not recommended to do it. Yet. Still wow. I, want, but yeah. I, try to do I guess the other question that I would have, and this is no disrespect to the presenter at all, but is this the only curriculum that we're going to be presenting to the Because it is very new, and that's not disrespect to But is this the only program that we're going to see to see if this is what we want? Good question. Is the end of it, this is a chapter in the textbook, but I still have to send home a letter and everything, and parents can opt out, which I have to create another assignment. But yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in in my opinion, I like the way it starts off in module one, talking about goals and mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? And then and then module two it talks about uh, STIs, which you know, kids should know about the know about that, and then it kind of kind of takes a detour into condom use and stuff. And uh, it seems like the rest of it is about condoms. And heavy on the HIV. So yeah, and then, and then uh, it seems almost like abstinence is like a side note, you know? There has been condoms for Yeah. And how many of those parent health forms are actually gonna make it to the parent and not just yeah. signed by the student? In, in my opinion, I, I do not support this. Um, so when is it something with the new standards that it has to be offered, but we as a committee decide what curriculum to meet that standard? Or, does or does it, do you already meet the standards in the regular health class? I cover everything that we just went over. Okay. But the new standards that are coming up. So as, as they come, like the pop-up was a, a, an addition that was added in, so I had to add that. Um, as things get added, We'll have to adjust like any other subject. You know, now we can talk about this, now you can't talk about that. Like with history, <laughs> that's what's out right now. You, you can't address these certain events that have happened in the past. Well, if things change with health, then we have to adjust so and make. More, more, like, more okay, our question is we thought that as part of the shack, it was our responsibility to review several materials and determine which one we wanted for our, our school district. So is what you're telling us is that the state board has decided on one? No, so there are lots of materials and lots of curriculums that are available to you. Um, we just went through a, a training with the state. There are two or th there are three that are approved that fully cover the TEAK standards, which means like the school board has reviewed them. They're completely covered. Um, I don't remember what the other ones are, but you can you can look so them you up. So you just have are, one, right? Yeah. So this is just an option. So this is something that y'all can choose. Um, the good thing about it is you don't have to pay any money. We come in and do it. Um, our teachers are trained for sexual health education. <coughs> they know this topic. This is all that they teach. Um, they're very comfortable with it. Um, but yeah, you have the option to choose any curriculum that meets those TEAK standards, or you can you know choose one and then supplement it with your own materials if you want to. Um, meet those standards if you use a curriculum that doesn't meet those. Do you know how many students were offered this at that charter school and how many actually opted in to do it? Yeah, um, I'm not sure there attend how many actually um, got the permission form, but we have 10 total. Yeah, so. And how big is the population of the school though? 
So it's, they've got maybe one percent of the population. Yeah, it's pretty small. I would assume. I can't. I can't say exactly how many, but I mean, we didn't get a whole lot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Are there are there any curriculums that discuss the uh, I guess emotional or mental impacts of having sex, like condoms or no condoms? How does that affect future relationships? You know, and kids doing it, you know, anything like that? Yeah, no, um, that so would be important. This one and the other one that I taught um, didn't go over that in a whole lot of detail, no. And I'm not real familiar with a lot of other ones. You have to purchase them in order to see them or be a teacher to um, look at them. So I, I don't know for sure. We cover emotions. Mm -hmm. Part, uh, that's why this chapter is it's chapter 18 in the textbook. Your feelings, sad, all the moving, uh, what's the movie? Inside Out, is your perfect description of why we think and do. So we cover all the emotions, and then that's where, and then the, I think my biggest thing is knowing the kids. When the kids know you and you've had them a semester, they, we, that's what we did to this chapter, they are very. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about and like that, But those things can come up. Okay, this happens. Like, there were, this couple, we watched a short clip yesterday. They were arguing because she was not able to get pregnant. So they were going through the fertility. And third time, they in, four embryos were implanted, nothing took. And they're like, oh, we can try it again when you're ready. So then we pause the break and talk about it. Okay, how is that going to affect their marriage? Is it going to affect their marriage? Because he's like, oh, I'm fine with it. She's like, I'm fine with it. Are they really fine with it? No, they're not. So we, we stop, but I have time. I'm not, I, you know what I mean? I have a window where I can spend time talking about how does this affect them emotionally? Could their marriage be at risk because she's not able to get pregnant, he wants a child, you know, it, it, it deals with all the other, you know, how, and then how do you do that? Well, he took off running with his dog, stopped at a park and cried. But he's not, he has to be strong for the wife. She's gotta be emotionally ready to physically and, and go through all this with him. So we have time to do that, but then again, I know my kids because I've had them. Yeah, but I, I mean like, you know, kids having sex, <coughs> how they, you know, they, they there's, there's an impact no. on future relationships, mm -hmm. you know, marriage and stuff, you know. Oh, because the guy, and I told, we talked about, okay, girls, you, you get pregnant at a young age, whatever, it, it is what it is. I said, guys, don't raise your hand, but be honest. Are you going to be attracted to someone who is later in life, 2023, 20, who has a four-year-old? Do you want to take on that? And the guys are like, no. And the girl's like, oh. I go, they're being, <laughs> they're being honest with you. You have to understand because you did this and you have this child. So we're able to talk about those conversations do come up. Yeah. We, you know, and the guys, and you know, some of them are like, no, I, no. Okay, but then what if you do meet this person and you do love them? Are you willing to try to take? And what you're saying now at 16, 17, your, your thought process is going to change when you're 23, 24, 25. And I'll be telling them, there are men who do take on the role of becoming that stepdad, that bonus parent, whatever you want to call them nowadays. So we try to get every option, scenario that could. But sometimes, like I said, like with any other kids in any class, some of them are taking it in and some of them, and some of them are living it because we cover the papa stuff. And they get mad, like, my dad doesn't pay, my, my mom doesn't pay taxes. Like, they, they'll start telling you all this stuff. So some of them that I think have, are experiencing, my mom is a young mom, young parent. Um, it's a single home, the, the whole custody thing, the child support, if they're going through that, those are the ones that I think are sitting there going and taking all this in, because they don't want to be that. When they get, they don't want to be a teen mom, you know, so. So fit. Do you think the curriculum that we have set up now is sufficient or do we need to evolve? Well, I do it, so of course I think it's <laughs> No, <laughs> and I, no it's not. It's, you're it's, having to teach this or whatever. The only thing that I'm skeptical is, is the condom use. Going over that in detail and actually doing it, that's the first thing I tell them. We're not going to sit here and pull out, it used to be bananas, now it's water bottles. Um, actually showing them if the, if the district is, is saying we're not going to abstinence is our district again nothing against well they're just different. gonna google it anyway that, that's what i tell them to do, do. i tell them google you know how to get pregnant but the actual we're not going to cover that we're going to cover it happened you know y'all had sex his sperm her egg they you know and sometimes they don't connect and sometimes they do i know but they 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 think okay because i'm not pregnant who i'm good okay but now we have all these other things you have to worry about the sti you know stds um 
that you could get as a result. So that would be my only thing is going so much into detail about the use of content and how to <coughs> is if, I mean, should we? Because yes, we want to educate them and that's what we're, we're changing to in our curriculum. But how are they going to take it? They're yeah. going to say the next thing is going to be, well, then why don't you give this content? Well, I mean, one <coughs> thing I'd like to point out is we rely on data for every other subject and the data says it's not working. Mm -hmm. They get they get this information from TikTok. They get it from Google. This way they have it. It's accurate. They're going to use it correctly. And they know the risks. We're going to tell them that they don't work all of the time. And we're going to tell them the outcomes if it doesn't work. What, what does that look like? Patrick, this isn't replacing the health class. This is like the fifth grade class that they get for hygiene or the one that the girls get pulled out for like, it's just something extra that the parents have if they choose to go. And it's because the parents aren't teaching their kids go. They're not. Yeah. It's like either it's up to the school and I know a lot of parents are all like, well, this should be taught at home. I don't expect the school to do it, but they're not doing it. All. I told all all of I told them last week. They're just like my mom never. Talked when we went over the menstrual this. cycle, you can physically see on the girls' faces like the light bulb went on, and they understand why they're having a menstrual cycle, like because they don't they don't know that what it's intended for later in life. But why am I having to go through this? You know, and the boys too. Why am I? Having, because you may have a daughter, and the mom may not be around, and then the, we're going to come to you. No, you're not. You need to explain and understand emotionally what this girl's going through. And some kid told me that their sister started in fifth grade. So it's happening younger and younger. And what are you gonna do with your child and explain to them what's going on with their body if you as the male dad don't know? You need to know. But it's, it's I don't know, it's. Well, I as a parent think <coughs> it's choice. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we should give the parents the choice. It's gonna be up to them to opt in or opt out. They don't as a parent, you can say, you know what, I want you to take this class, or no, I'd rather, you know, talk. talk but if it's not coming, and it's not coming from us as employees, and we're not going to be, you know, told you you said this in class, or you did, and it's a, a, an organization that's coming in and doing it, then that's what they need to understand when they opt in is Choice. you're going to get told some information, you're going to get shown some information that they don't come back to the school district or the campus or the whatever and say this was said in to my child. You walked well, in. Have to know that because they'll have right. to say, I yes. want my child. Yes. Yeah, and you're yes. talking about like the kids that are already having sex in your class because you know, like you said, I could have so you could tell which ones are. What I like about hers, because I've always told my daughter, sex right now at this age is not fun. And I'm getting you ready for greatness to not end up having to have a baby and then you have to go back. I'm getting you ready to become an attorney. You understand what I'm saying? So what I like about hers is that it's showing, it's gonna teach them how to say no, how it's okay to not wanna have sex. All the refusal skills. Exactly. Is, yeah, and that's a chapter, that's, that's, why that's that a chapter like prior. To, the chapters that, is, that we yeah. have prior to this chapter lead up to it all comes mm -hmm. together. All the emotional stuff. And I think stuff, this, with what you teach, would go hand in hand. So oh, the yeah, ones that want to learn it, you yeah. know, from her, and the parents that do want our children to learn. And the good part about this is the, um, so the parent portion that I talked about, we don't have to implement this in order to do that. If that's something you're interested in, we offer those to anyone in the community. So we can offer this to all the parents in the high school. Um, it's that one and a half hour session where we talk to them about how to talk to their kids about sex. So we're not telling them what to say, like go tell your kid to have sex. If you're telling them, don't do this, don't do that, that's fine. But how do you open that conversation and how do you be an askable parent that your kid can feel like they can ask you about their sexual health? Um, so that's so what that session is. We all say, ooh. Yeah, we can, we can <coughs> you say, mom and dad, you know, you got here because mom and dad have ooh. <laughs> so yeah, they don't have, it. they don't, it's an awkward. <laughs> well, the, parents are, well, the, the parents will get like a session like this where it's kind of broken down for them. Yeah, so it's not in this much decide. detail just because we only have an hour and a half, but we go over, we answer all the questions. Um, everything's available if they want to look at it. We don't hide anything. Um, this is something that, like I said, I'll leave here so everyone can look at All parents can see it and make an informed decision if they want their child to be involved. If they don't, absolutely fine. That's, you know, the school provides something else for them to do. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. And Patrick, I, the question was asked, but I don't think anyone um, responded to it. But um, is there another option that we'll, we're going to review, or is this? There's other companies, and if, if it, that's the request is made, then I can I can look at other vendors. 
uh, they're not free. We, we can look at them. Uh, just other districts in the area, we're looking at this company, so that's why I, I chose this one. And this one's free of charge? The only reason I ask that question is because we don't know what we don't know, right? So mm -hmm. uh, we've been presented with this one, which, you know, doesn't sound like a bad idea. And even though it is free, is that the right one for TM? You know, that's the only reason why I ask if this is the only one that we'll see. Because it's kind of hard to make a decision if you don't know what you're deciding for or against. If somebody makes a motion. As an, out, as, as an outside group, just completely outside seeing the entire city in a whole, um, if this is something that's going to be presented citywide and countywide, it might be best because we're seeing a growth in NTM. We're getting outsiders into our district, and they, com they think completely different than our kids. You know, our kids are brought up a certain way, and it's been a small town feel, and now we're getting these big kids. And they're not problem kids, but they think completely different. So that's also something we need to think about. Are we going to be the only school teaching a, a curriculum that no one else is teaching, and we're getting these other kids that automatically fall in line with, <coughs> excuse me, with what she's saying? So... That might be a thought. Well, and another thing, too, is that y'all are local, right? Y'all's office is right there in Corpus. So <laughs> if, say, you go through this curriculum with the student and maybe it doesn't affect them at that moment, there may be a time later in their life where they have questions or there's a concern or maybe they need to have an HIV test. They don't have to worry about where to go. They just go into town. They know exactly where to find that type of information versus if there's some big outside company that we have to call an 800 number or... You know, you dial this and possibly speak to a real life person when they can physically go into y'all's offices. Because yeah. what other, you have other things available there yeah, at the, so wellness the Wellness Foundation. Wellness Foundation. We have a fully operating clinic. So we've got two um, physicians, a whole bunch of medical assistants, a nurse practitioner. Um, so they see anyone in the community. They are primary care. Um, we work on a sliding scale, so you don't have to have insurance um, to be seen. We see anyone. Um, we work with any income. We also have behavioral health services. Um, we have our own food pantry, we have our own pharmacy, um, and then my area does the STI and HIV testing um, for the community, um, and then education on how to prevent that as well, of course. Um, so we, we see the need, we, we're seeing these kids come into our clinic, and um, you can get tested in, in, Texas with, in Texas without parental consent at starting at the age of 14. So we, we, we see them, we know that it's happening, they're coming in for testing, they're coming out positive, and then we use that opportunity to tell them as much as we can, you know, we tell them to talk to their parents because treatment's going to be expensive, you're going to need insurance, it's good to talk to your parents, we tell them about condoms at that time, but there's only so much we can do in that time, and, and this would prevent all of that from happening. So we see it, we do offer all of those services, um, it is part of the TEKS that you let kids uh, or teens know where can you get services in the community? Um, so we do let them know that we are a resource um, if they need to see a doctor. Um, we have some kids from a program we were running out in Cal Allen who actually drove out just to come see our educators um, because they made a really good connection with them and she found out she was pregnant. Um, so she showed up with her boyfriend and they were 16 and they didn't know what to do. Um, so they came just to talk to them. So they sat down in our office and just you know, we were just a, a place where they could go and talk to someone. We didn't talk to them about options. We don't do any of that. That's not, that's not what we do. We don't even say that word. Um, we just were someone for them to talk to. Um, so we gave them resources for somewhere they could go get um, a pregnancy test from an actual doctor um, to ensure that she was pregnant is what we wound up doing. But, um, yeah, we, we're just a trusted source for them um, in the community as well. So I'm glad you brought that up. I do think it's a good a good option for them, but I would like to make a motion that we hear at least one other curriculum. That way we know uh, we can make an informed decision. Yeah. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Motion here. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I get the name of the person who made the motion? Amber Watkins. And who's second? Uh, Denise. Denise. Of what on the data so last time I asked what the school had in terms of data with pregnancy and uh, HIV rates and all that stuff uh, we didn't have any for TM uh, but I, I was on the city council like youth and children committee a couple years back and they had all the data which is why I asked and it showed it didn't show like our area had a problem no that was like 10 years ago but majority of it was like the West Oso, CCISD area, and then the Bluff, Portland, and us out here in Annabelle, Cal Allen, it was like extremely minimal, which is 
was my very first question last time was how can we compare and stuff. I think Ray a few years back was the highest. Yes, yeah. In Texas. That was a mistake. Mm -hmm. But we have, I mean, since I've been teaching health, we as an eighth grader come to the high school credit. And then come to freshman, she was already pregnant. And we've had a few. I don't think it's as high as other areas, but like you said, we started to get a lot of people. And what is the full name of your curriculum? Because I it went by so fast on the screen. Yeah, it's making Rush. parental choices. Oh, of our program. So our program from Coastal Bay Wellness Foundation is called Project Rush, and it stands for Realistic Understanding of Sexual Health. Um, but the evidence-based curriculum is called Making Proud Choices. <laughs> making <clears throat> proud choices? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one more question for yeah. you. So I know right now it's you and a team of five, and you're going through several SHAC committees. In the event that you are approved for more districts and this grows, what's your plan? Is it still going to be five? Or? Yeah, that's a great question. So we um, also have the uh, drug, the, our, um, it's a youth program. Um, so they mostly go to schools and teach drug prevention. Um, they start in elementary through high school, and they're in a lot of schools around the county. I'm sure that you've seen them. Um, they're called Project Turnaround. Um, so they are educators who already go into schools. They know how to do classroom management. We would train them on our curriculum if we were noticing that we needed more educators, um, and then they would be able to help us um, facilitate. I, I just want to add, I, I work at uh, the Academic Career Center, and um, there is an issue with teen pregnancy. Please come by and visit our campus, ask questions, talk to some of our teachers. It's here. And there are a lot of reasons that they'll tell you why that are not in this training, that are not, probably not taught in their health class. And that's more of the, um, like you said, mental health issues. You know, I I'm, I'm, was told to get pregnant because my boyfriend said, if you, if you don't wear a condom, show me you love me. You don't need a condom. You know, um, these, uh, our students, some of them get pregnant because they have no one that loves them and they want to have somebody to make that's going to love them back. So there are a lot of underlying issues that are not covered necessarily in TEKS or curriculum, but, but it's here. It's here in our area, and it needs to be addressed one way or the other. I think you're right. The supplement to yes. what we're doing is, is, is I'm, I'm not saying that's not needed. It's, but with the understanding that what's presented from whatever, whatever group we get to, to do this is the parental understanding when they sign off that this is... You're opting in with understanding of this, not right, not the, the, this class, like the health class, like this, because there's some stuff that I wouldn't touch. <laughs> so, do y'all provide the, the <coughs> template for that letter of the yeah, opt-in? Yeah. Does it review what the modules are? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then we will go ahead and let them know that um, we have it at the admin office so they can actually come down and review the whole entire thing with all the materials <clears throat> at any time. We would share the, the Google link with everyone. However, it would it would be distributed, and, and it is copyrighted. We get in trouble for that. So, um, so, so if it's yeah, copyrighted, how do the parents get a copy themselves? They would have to purchase it. And But you don't know how much it costs. I don't, but I can get back to you for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. The cost, uh, if you could send me the, the parental... Uh, approval letter yeah, so I can send it out to the group. How many of y'all actually watched the videos? I think I it is. I it kept yeah. saying we don't have access for access. Mm -hmm. I press request access. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, what too. I'd like to do is break so we can get to lunch um, and grab your lunch and I'd like for y'all to at least watch one of the two of the or, uh, the videos. So y'all can kind of see what it, what it is and how it's presented through the videos. Uh, even though we'll be looking at another group, but we need to hear <coughs> any your, your thoughts on the videos. I watched a couple of them. Did I miss what the teen pregnancy number is here at TM? Do we know that? I can tell you this year at the Academic Career Center, we had four in the first semester. Out of how many girls? How many girls? Oh, at, well, we had uh, started with 50 students this year, mm -hmm. and we're about half and half, so... And is that part for the course each year? You have like around four no, each year? I mean, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. We usually have maybe one or two a semester. Wow. Yeah. But, but I mean, we, and we also look back at, we had kids at home for a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we shut down for COVID a, a year and, and kids were home, parents were working. So we take all of those <clears throat> things into account. But it's those so. are also the ones that you know are pregnant and are going through with it. There, there yes. are a lot more. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Cora, how could we get the 
teen pregnancy rate for TM? Uh, would the county health department have it? Our registrar should have it. Yeah, because that's an at risk. The factor. registrar they're coded differently, and our fathers. We also have fathers in the in the on the campuses as well. It affects their lives as well. And Mr. So. Benavides, we've had a couple of students that have come to us pregnant and are no longer pregnant, and that could be because of various reasons. We don't ask, you know, but we're here to help them. I yes, sir. Have kids that are parents. We'll find that out and send it out. Do we offer any help for yeah, kids that are pregnant? Algebra, yes, sir. At the Academic Career Center, yes, sir, we do. We have, um, we bring in. But district wide, <coughs> does anybody know? Patrick, anybody? Do we offer any help, Ms. Sikora, to, teen, to teens, fathers or mothers? I don't know the answer to that. What we do offer is when we have a student, a girl, become pregnant, we usually, ACC, the alternative education, is usually one of the avenues that we take to make sure they get educated. Because a lot of times they drop out, y'all. They get pregnant and they're sick or they don't feel good or they're tired or they're scared. Just, exactly. They don't want to be ridiculed. All of a sudden they're hiding it. And so they, they, but. ACC has saved many, many, many of our girls, and and um, it. But they do have the option to stay at the high school and finish their pregnancy there. So it isn't like oh, we're sending them to a you know a mother's school or something like that. It's not. It's just a, a kind of like a a speed. It's accelerated learning. Exactly. Exactly. But if then they need to get into the workforce or need to. You know, well, get ready to prepare for it. That the boys also need help. Mm -hmm. And that Papa training, you know. that is fantastic. <clears throat> and it, it's especially with the rights of a lot of our young men who are fathers are going to be, to know your legal rights or the things that you, what you've been told by other people are not correct. Mm -hmm. And that's a great training. The first thing that was, oh, grandparents. Grandparents have no say. Right. Mm -hmm. Grandparents have no say in the And that's what the state attorney general. Well, and I, when a student, I'm the nurse at the high school, so when a student comes into us and starts telling us that she's pregnant or thinks she is, the first thing out of my mouth is, does dad go to school here? Who knows? Do your parents know? I mean, there's like, we do now. I do think that uh, we don't provide any extra, like, parental, like, classes or anything like that, but I think you all do, right? I used to have Refuge of Hope before they COVID kind of shut them down. They would come in. Um, and say if you need a place to go to get tested we can do that but then it's confidential as well and they would give them all kinds of other sources that you can go to within <coughs> the community or even the, the city um refuge of hope is is very abstinent yes. based yes. training and they so would it, come it, into the middle it, school right. as very well. abstinent based yeah. training she would come in during this chapter and go over reiterate everything and we have that, no, that program's not here anymore they're not it's a it's a, is a program side shut funding. down so I, I haven't been able to get them to come in in the last. Well, since, since COVID, mm -hmm. COVID. Does so. that align something with like what she's presenting? It's its own. It's right there on Violet. Um, By the ABC the church. church. Yeah, it's like a little house it's in the corner. Anymore. That house is gone. Actually, it was, a, it was the, the lady who was a yeah, pro that, program director. The Refuge of Hope um, I think merged was. with another organization, Coastal Bend. I think it's down Something. Oh, but it's, uh, it still exists, but it merged with another Somebody program that offered similar now. services, and now it's just one big And they would, come, yeah, in. They would bring, come in during health class yeah. and then present. Some people would ask questions there, but a lot of kids would like stay over and talk to her and stuff. Because it's it it is it's I had one student who actually the one that came in as a as a freshman pregnant she had her baby she never went to ACC she came back to school she graduated she did the whole CNA program senior year she got pregnant again um, <coughs> she and she came by a lot one but thing I'm proud of TM is I think our schools are are it, whether a, a teen mom stays at the high school or goes to ACC. Um, I think most of our students, and I know, of course, our staff members are very caring and welcoming. I don't think we have a lot of shame, or I could say that we have that. When we've had moms come to ACC, you know, they'll tell us, I'm here because I need to graduate because I need to take care of my baby. They're not because I was ridiculed or shamed or made to feel uncomfortable at the high school. And I think that says a lot about, about our district. So, 
especially when the kids go to school together since they were that's like, right yeah. our kids are going mm -hmm. since they were babies mm -hmm. that helps but it still seems to have some kind of support system in-house or i mean tm Totally Our counselors are happened. pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they'll like try to give resources and counsel them, and you know, they're going through a lot, and it's it's a complicated time. It is. All right, we're about to take a break so we can grab lunch. Before we take a break, I, we took the vote too quickly, and Chrissy couldn't get the count. So everybody in here is a voting member except for Fig. Is, uh, she's the instructor. She's invited, and Christina is my secretary helping take notes and helping me with these. So those are the only two non-voting people. And, of course, uh, the, the presenter. Could you raise your hand if you voted uh, to have a second group come in just so we can get a count? Hey, keep it up now. It's everybody. It is everybody. It might be easier to cover the no. Okay, so everybody. Okay, everybody. Three. Okay. Just make sure you signed in. Okay. And at this time, you're free to. The restrooms again are, are right down there. The food, the table, drinks. Grab your stuff and then watch the video. She's got to go. She's got to go shop somewhere. She's got a sale. We just finished it yesterday. They, they saw birth I got to go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom. Like, no. It's, they, they just, they sit there like this, and then, I'm, and I tell, I, I walk them through, okay, it's, you're getting ready to see it, there's no pain, and no kind of, no, thank you so much, I took that Ohio one, much different from South Texas, but, do you really, the winters are the worst, I don't know, I would love to, I hear that, 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 yeah, I only have coverage till fifth period. Should I leave? How's it going? Because I think this might last. I don't know. Okay. So I need to get through it for a long time. I need all the time to see the people. Thank you. 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 Thank you
so what I'm going to have her do is start about, you know, about go through about five or ten minutes of a video so you can see that, and then we'll flip to another one. That way you can kind of see the content across it, and we'll see about get, making sure you have the link so you can actually view these at home uh, because I really want you to be informed on, on what the kids are going to be seeing in these videos. All right, so the we'll Google Drive will request you to request access. That's normal just because we don't want to share it with everyone, like we said. Okay. But as soon as you request access, I go through and I look at all the emails from the SHAC and I verify that you are a SHAC member, you're on the thing, we accept it. So once you go back, you should be good. So just give it like a day and you should be good to go back in. Email me personally if it won't work so I can grant you access. Um, but I, I do want you to be able to see those and it should be working. Okay, and the other thing before, before we start the videos, some districts have already approved it. There's a requirement that it goes, to, goes through two readings. Uh, so I'm going to have her share the districts that have already approved it and that they're working with, because I think you guys should, should hear that. Um, so Ingleside ISD, um, SHAC, we've gone through both meetings and presentations, and they have voted yes. So they are um, pushing that onto the school board. Um, so that's one. Uh, Mathis ISD has also voted yes for their shack. So again, the next step is the school board. I don't know if we really talked about that. So the next step after y'all vote is it goes to the school board. Again, they get to open meetings and they get to view all the materials um, mm -hmm. in, in its entirety and they get to make a decision. Should they vote yes, then it's the final yes. It's okay. We come in and educate. If not, obviously we don't. Um, so we've got Mathis, um, Ingleside, and then Aransas Pass. And then other schools that are looking at but they haven't had their two shack meetings yet is Flower Bluff. Mm -hmm. um, um, we have so many. <laughs> Cal Allen. Um, we'll get you a full yeah, list of districts that they're yeah. working with. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Okay, so for the sake of time, she obviously um, does find out that she has chlamydia, um, and then she finds out that one of her friends also slept with the same guy who she slept with who has chlamydia, and she has a difficult choice of whether to tell her that she also slept with him, and, and it, it's a whole thing where she has to decide um, what to tell her friend. Um, but she does have an STD and she has to go through treatment and it shows her going through um, the doctor calling to confirm and her going through treatment. Um, 
that, that her and her friend slept with the same person, and then she wants her friend to go get tested, but she's like, oh, do I tell her that I've had sex with this person too? Um, so that's her choice, that's this video. I'm gonna show you, there's quite a few, so I, I don't wanna keep you up. And like I said, these are all on the Google Drive, so you can watch them in their entirety.
summarize the rest of this video. Um, it's HIV testing day. Coco is Wanda Psych. She's on the radio trying to tell everyone that it's testing day. Come get tested. It's free. Um, so both of the friends decide to go get tested. The friend on the right is in a monogamous relationship with his girlfriend, but they don't use condoms. They talk about that because they're not sleeping with anyone else, so it's okay. Um, and then the one on the left is sleeping with lots of different women, um, but he does use condoms. So they go get tested, and it turns out the friend in the monogamous, monogamous relationship has HIV. Um, the one who is sleeping around but using condoms does not have it. It turns out that the one who's in a monogamous relationship, his girlfriend, slept with someone before they were together who had HIV, but she didn't know. Um, so it goes through that. You can't tell um, who has HIV just by looking at them, and just because you're in a monogamous relationship doesn't mean that you shouldn't use protection. And there is an activity that follows this. Um, it's in the workbook. And um, so they go through and they pretend that their caller is calling into Coco on the um, radio show. Um, so they'll go through, like one says, Dear Coco, my girlfriend and I have been going out for a year. We really love each other and both want to have sex. I trust her, but I'm concerned about HIV. My girlfriend and I are 14 years old and neither one of us has tattoos and we don't use drugs. We've been thinking about having sex, but only with each other. Do we have to worry about HIV? Um, so it goes through different scenarios. Um, so we break them off into groups and they work through what would your response be? If you're Coco and someone's calling in and asking you this, what do you say? Um, so there are things that we want them to address. The fact that they're 14, are they ready to have sex? What comes with having sex? Obviously, um, what happened to them in their relationship? We thought that they were monogamous. They don't have tattoos, but they still had HIV. Um, we go through all of that. So there's a bunch of different scenarios that go along with this um, video. Do you want me to keep going? What time do you want me to stop? I think we're about... We running short on time is there any other specific questions you'd like to ask her we're going to work on getting a, a second program in here for the next meeting uh, is there any other things that we'll work on getting you access to the videos i'll get you the forms uh the parent approval forms so you can see what those look like is there anything else that you guys uh, would like to see questions Then at this time, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on and allow her uh, some time to pack her stuff there. And then we'll move on to the... Uh... I just want to thank you for coming, and please do not be offended that we want to look at other programs. Oh, no, no, I was letting Patrick know that I um, I have a resource for him of some other curriculums that okay. are being used in Texas that I can share so that he can make an informed decision. Yeah. Absolutely understand. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the next agenda on the item is Stop the Bleed, and that was uh, uh, requested that it be placed on the agenda, and it's just an update on where we are with Stop the Bleed. Uh, Stop the Bleed, uh, we again, we started before COVID. We have the kits in the schools. Uh, they're mounted on the walls. Uh, uh, we're not happy with the quality of the kits, nor the number of kits. Uh, I was recently touring in an Ingleside facility, and I found a manufacturer for some better kits. So I'm going to get some quotes on those and get get those kits ordered. Uh, in addition, we want uh, kits to be in every hallway, uh, every wing. I don't think we have enough kits. If there was an emergency or the time it would take to go get a kit is critical. So we're going to add more kits. We'll get all those ordered uh, over the holidays. Uh, as far as the training, again, our nurses are trained on it, our athletic <coughs> trainers. Uh, in our February intercession, our next intercession, we'll look at taking some time and start expanding to, uh, the training to our teachers and staff. Uh, once we get all our staff trained, it's going to take a while. The goal is by ne the start of next school year that we have all our staff trained, and then we start opening it to the students who want to get trained on Stop the Bleed. There are certain classes, health classes, nursing classes that we can teach it. But we, I, uh, I believe it's the consensus that we should give these students the opportunity to get the train also. Are there any questions or comments about that? Yes, sir. Um, I'm at the high school, and there's there was one mounted by my class, and it kept falling out, and I tried to put it in the bracket, and keep, it kept falling out. So, yeah, you, you mentioned the quality. That's something that might need yeah, to be addressed. The ones that we saw, they're a hard case, yeah. and it, it's a metal hook where it, it, it's, uh, it's on there. Um, so it would be securely mounted, and it's a much more attractive case than a, a little cheap plastic case. All right. What is in the, the kit exactly? The kit it contains the, the required tourniquets. Uh, what I may do is, is have the nurses present at our next shack meeting, present it. But it has uh, the tourniquets, and uh, it has the... Uh, 
dre a wound dressing. To, if there's a deep wound, you, you uh, put the dressing in there to help stop the bleed. Uh, it's got the, the, uh, the gloves, uh, the marker, because once you apply the tourniquet, you have to put the time on the tourniquet that you applied it. Um, it's got, it's supposed to have a thermal blanket, uh, to, and then you cover the victim and, and all that. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll probably get the nurses to actually give a presentation on what it's doing. Uh, we do it, we test, uh, I believe we're doing a, uh, a pool noodle is what we're doing it on. Uh, but we'll, we'll get yes. that. Yes. Uh, I was telling uh, Ms. Mostella, too, that uh, we'll get more kits. Uh, I saw one of our, the, the districts I was visiting with on, on a transportation issue, I saw as door prizes, they were giving out personal kits, uh, stop and bleed kits. I, when all this started, I ordered one myself. It's about $39, $40 for a personal kit. And they were giving them out as uh, door prizes to their teachers. They can't afford to give them all to a teacher, but if we can get the small kits into the classrooms, that helps also. All right. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. And then the last item on the agenda, sorry, I'm walking my agenda, is just a COVID update. And I passed this around. Everybody should have one of these. Just kind of looking at the numbers. Does anyone have one? Uh, you can see the numbers. It's for the entire school year again. Uh, since we last met in November, you, you can see that we actually dropped down. We were uh, end of October, November, we were hit at one case uh, throughout the entire district. Uh, the week before Thanksgiving, we actually hit zero. Uh, of course, none reported during the Thanksgiving break, but once we came back from Thanksgiving, there was a little bit of a blip there. We went from four to six, uh, and I know that we're up more than three. The, these numbers were printed yesterday morning. I think we had three more cases yesterday, so I think we're at six for this week so far, so we'll, we'll probably exceed six this week. Uh, we'll be off. The students leave. Uh, Friday's the last day for the students. They don't return, uh, for the most part, they don't return until January the 18th. Uh, I'm ex we'll be carefully monitoring those numbers because I'm thinking we're going to have another little blip if, if we're following it. Uh, if you're going out in the community, I was out shopping, uh, Christmas shopping and stuff like that, you'll notice more and more people are wearing masks again. Uh, I was in the Houston Mall, and the, I can tell you the majority of the people at the Woodlands Mall this past Saturday had their mask on. It was the it was rare that you didn't see the mask, so it's coming back, and we'll we'll, we'll monitor the numbers and we'll adjust from there. Patrick, are these all are these employees or students? This or a is combination? this combination. This is the entire district number, so staff and students. I think our testing kits expire this month. Are we going to be getting more? I will send you out a notice. Uh, so I've been monitoring that. Uh, the, they just extended the date for the one full year. So from the date, that the expiration date that's on the kit, they're good for one full year from that date. So we're good all the way back until June. Okay. And we're not going anywhere through the number of <coughs> test kits that I thought we'd be going through. I thought we'd be burning through these quite a bit. I still have five cases locked up, and there's eight, test, eight, eight, eight boxes of 40 in each one of those. Uh, yeah, that, I'm going to say something about that because we were testing quite a bit at the beginning, but and we even offer it now. Like a student comes in that's kind of like COVID symptomatic, and we'll call the parent, and they're like, "No, I'll take them to my doctor or whatever." They're they're like refusing it. I don't know if y'all are experiencing the same thing, but but we we try to promote it, you know, like to to get them tested, but they're like, mm -mm. like they don't they don't want it done. Um, I don't know what's going on. Well, we can't force it. We can just no, no, no. It. But I am telling you that we do have the testing kits in our office, and we are offering it, and you know, encouraging parents to. But they're they're not interested. I find it odd. Unless maybe they don't trust it. But that's crazy. Maybe so. They wouldn't, but. but it's the same. Like they don't realize they don't it's, realize the, it's same the same thing. test that they get at like. Genesis, CVS, Walgreens, the doctor. Have we made that like public to our students and parents that we offer it? It's on our web page, isn't it? It's on the website. Yeah. That we already have. Because I'll still talk to parents and I'm like, oh, you can do that there. So they, like, I don't a lot think of them they read the web page they they don't, unless they're looking for some something it's specific. Kind of when, you're, when you're calling, because you know if they're sick and they're having the, the idea was that when you're calling them to to come pick them up that you would give them that option that, that we could test them there is the way the word would get out. 
Yeah. They're afraid to get a positive test. Our next meeting. Our next meeting will be February the 17th. Uh, after the holidays, it'll be about a month. We, we come back on January the 18th, so about a month after we start back for school, we'll have our next meeting. Are there any items that you would like placed on the agenda for that meeting? Uh, so last time I asked if we could talk about, like, mental health and stuff. So, like, how Ms. Chopper was, what was the two examples you said on people? They got pregnant because no one loved them. And then well, social emotional you. health. Yeah, social emotional health. Uh, I don't know, I guess, the best way to talk about it or discuss it in this setting. Uh, but, yeah, mindfulness training or different things like that. I want to add something, too. I, we are seeing an increase of vaping and drug use. And, y'all, I know it's an old subject, but it needs to be addressed again. It's like the kids are vaping like crazy, and the parents are totally clueless. Like, when we call them in, they're like, I didn't even know what they... They're, like, totally, like, blown away that their kids are vaping. And we've got all the evidence. We're pulling everything out of their backpacks. and They can buy everything online. I know. Right. Well, and, and I parents, think uh, you know, another part of that, too, is that parents, there are some parents, not me personally, but there are some parents that think it's actually a better alternative it's than smoking. to smoking. But they're, they've got well, THC. And we're THC starting to see more THC. Yeah. THC. Yeah. Yes. And there's uh, another thing, other thing called tip hit marijuana. or hit, what is it, hit or tip or tip hit? Yes. Yeah. Where they're dipping the, the mouthpiece into, like, formaldehyde, and they're like, oh, oh, yeah, y'all, it's <laughs> like... We're seeing it, we too. We have had to send a student to the hospital. And it's getting harder for educators to, because to, you can't smell it. You, it's, it's scentless. It, it's little, it's in their pocket. It's not like when somebody would come under the influence of marijuana where you could smell it, you could yeah. see their eyes red. You're not seeing those symptoms that you see, but you can see in their behavior. But well, what's different? When Miss Vega brought up the metal detectors and picking oh, yeah. up vapes, I thought, well, that's... I'm, I'm more worried about that than the guns and the knives and stuff because, I mean, that the vape is just, like, escalating the, the when usage of it. When you're talking about the use of vapes and THC vapes and all of that, you're going to have a rise in the increase of weapons and because there's... They're selling it. I mean, it's not just... Absolutely. They're selling kits. We, we can't get into a full discussion because it was an agenda item, but I will place it on the uh, okay. agenda for the next meeting. Can we invite our district social worker to our meeting and maybe she could discuss how, what she's seeing in our district with our kids? Our foundation does have um, vaping and opioid use prevention education. I could have someone come and do a presentation on that. Um, they do it from elementary to high school, and it's um, for each group. It's catered to each. I think that would be great. So they could come and present that if that's something that you're interested Ms. in. Ms. Stella, that's the new social worker? Yes. Is it the new social worker that's been here since? <laughs> when was she hired? In October. It's been in October. About three years ago. From what I understand, it's one social worker that serves a primary and intermediate. Is that Intermediate I know that she's uh, one of them's housed at primary, but I thought we were getting two. Yeah. I'd have to get Holly to speak on that. Uh, she just left. Otherwise, I'll get it. I'll get you an update on that. Well, we only we the hired one. Time a long time. All right, it was yeah, for the intermediate and she's housed at the primary. Now that would be interesting to hear. I just didn't know how many. I, I know it had been mentioned at one of the meetings, but I wasn't sure if it was one or two. But it, right now, we know we definitely have at least we one. Have one at the primary. Okay. Again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day. Uh, it's important for the, our, our students' well-being and, and uh, safety and security. Um, have a great holiday. Uh, we'll see you after the uh, holidays. We'll see you again in February. Thank you.